Hey, I'm Megan. Welcome to my channel, Glue Guns and Roses. And I'm totally stoked about today's video. Not only is it another Dollar Tree Fold DIY, we got six DIYs that are $6 or less in this video. It's a little bit longer than I usually like to make, so we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it. For the first DIY, some of this garland, banner, whatever you wanna call it, from Dollar Tree in the party section, seasonal section, depending on how your DT set up. Throw the two cans aside, you don't need those. Rip the letters off, but be careful while pulling off the A and the L because you do need these. Take some cardstock, thick paper, and trace out two L's and an A. Now, if you don't have thicker paper or cardstock, just use regular paper. That will work too. Use what you have. Now, to make the F, all you gotta do is take the L, flip that bad boy over, lay it down, trace it out, leaving a spot to cross your F, I don't know, dot your I's, cross your T's, I don't know, but you see what I'm talking about. Then just take the A, trace it out, and then freehand the very end. Make sense? I hope so. I, I think you can see what I'm doing. Then all you gotta do is just cut out your letters, use hot glue, a glue stick, tape, whatever you want, put the letters back onto your banner. Now, I love this Dollar Tree banner because the burlap itself is pretty thick or it's stiff, it's not thick, but it's stiff so it won't curl up, it's not flimsy. And where you place the banner is where it stays so it doesn't get floppy on you. And this would look cute on a chalkboard or on a mantle or wherever you wanna put it. For the next DIY, just one of the larger willow wreaths from the Dollar Tree. Ignore the hot glue on mine. This is being reused. I change my mind, change out my decor, change out my wreaths, and I don't want to spend a dollar each time. Five of these long cotton pick stems from Dollar Tree, and all you have to do is take your stems and then wrap them around the wreath. These are really bendable and strong at the same time, if that makes sense. So you don't need any hot glue, floral tape, floral wire, anything like that which is amazing because that means I can reuse these stems or the wreath if I want it to again. And here it is. I like my wreath to be a little bit wild and whimsical, so I didn't do a pattern or anything like that or add a bow, but you can definitely do all of that. So $6, I think this may be the most expensive DIY in this video, but all the items can be reused because nothing's glued down. And we are on to the next one where all you need is a book, whether you're reading it, not reading it, or just buy one from Dollar Tree for a dollar. Some craft paper also available at DT. Cut down and then fold the craft paper to be the same length as the book and tape it on one side, not both sides. Then take your hands, smooth the paper and feel out the shape of the book, making creases where the book will go. We're like molding the book to make an outline. Okay, and I 100% get, I'm stumbling over my words. So here's what I'm trying to say. You open it back up with one side still taped and you see this line? This is gonna be your guide for your words or your letters. Does that make sense? Now I'm using Dollar Tree's Jot Stencil, but you could freehand or use Dollar Tree little sticker letters that are about the same size. And I like to start at the end of the word and work my way back. And with stencils, I always go back and fill in the little lines and then just scribble it with a colored pencil. Then you go back and you close the other side. So I hope you stayed with me on that one. Now I do it this way because I find it really hard to stencil or stamp on a book when it's closed. I found this the easiest way for me to get my lettering and words straight. And I love that you can do whatever you want. I did Harvest Blessings. You could do Happy Thanksgiving, your children's names, your cat's names, I love mom, whatever you want. I love personalized stuff. To style this, I'm just using one of Dollar Tree's white velvet pumpkins. And some of this Walmart $2 eucalyptus just pulled off a few pieces, put it under the pumpkin and voila, here we go. Now you could also use some twine or ribbon, wrap it around there and make it look super cute. I'm sure you've seen that on Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube. That's adorable too. I just left mine as is. And I love decor that can be personalized, customized, and easily changeable. And this one is super inexpensive too. Next, all you need is some of the Dollar Tree's foam pumpkins. It doesn't matter the color or the size. Well, the size may matter. We'll get into that later. 
And then I just raided my craft closet for any yellow, greens, or neutral paint colors I could find. Mix them together and then pull the stems off your pumpkin and paint them. That's simple. When it's dry, push the stems back in. Super easy, no special technique. Few of these Dollar Tree pine cone cotton pick mixes. And then some jars that cost me a dollar or less, like this one from Goodwill, it was like 75 cents. This container I got from Dollar Tree a while back and a old jalapeno jar I just rinsed out. But you could pay a dollar if you wanted to and get the same size at Dollar Tree. And this is the part where it depends on the size of pumpkins you want. Now this jar was bigger that I got at the thrift store, but if you're using a smaller Dollar Tree jar, just get the smaller little pumpkins. I feel guilty calling this a DIY, so maybe it's more like inspiration because it was so simple. And you could of course add twine or ribbon or raffia, whatever you want to the top. I like the simplicity of the glass with the fall items. Next, one of these flower and garden tins, also from Dollar Tree, and 100% acetone is the key, 100% acetone. Remove the lettering, rinse it off, and then I swear I'm not crazy, but toilet bowl cleaner, and we're going to make this look really rustic. Now, I did a full detailed tutorial in this video right here. I'll have it linked at the end where you can click on it and watch that if you want to. But the gist of it is toilet bowl cleaner, use a scrub brush, set it outside or in your garage, somewhere ventilate it, not indoors for a few hours, hose it off, and then voila, you have a rusted metal looking tin. I've done a few of these and the cool thing is every single tin turns out a little bit different, even if I use the exact same brand or whatever of tin. A few of these Dollar Tree daisies, some more Walmart $2 eucalyptus, and just threw them in my tin. Or I didn't throw them in there, I styled them a little bit, but you know what I'm saying. What I love about this tin though, is that some of the lettering did kind of show through, which I think looks super cool. I kind of want to play around with that a little bit more, trying to do that intentionally. I think it looks really rustic. I've also been playing around with how I'm going to style my fall banner. I also think it looks super cute on some frame shiplap or faux shiplap. I made this one and I'll have that video linked at the end as well. And I could see this being used in a dining room or maybe outdoors on a covered porch in the backyard. I don't know, I think it's super cute. Next, all you need is two, only two of these Dollar Tree little shadow boxes. Take a screwdriver or some pliers. I've used both and they both work just fine. And just remove the hanging material so you can use your hands with a little bit of pressure and remove the back of the frame or the particle board part. And then remove the circle and the square that's connected to that. You will only need one of the Tumbling Tower game from Dollar Tree and it is the exact same size as the shadow box frame, which is also wood. I'm using super glue because I can't do E6000. I love the fast dry time of only 10 minutes and the strong hold, but my friend in the comments told me about her gluing her feet to the kitchen floor and she's not doing super glue. That's fine. Use wood glue, E6000. Just, I don't recommend using hot glue. It, it wouldn't be good for this craft. I did six blocks in each row. After that dried for 10 minutes, then you go back and this is the bottom of the lantern. You see how the pretty side of the shadow box is up. Glue the sides down, wait a little bit, wait 10 minutes and then add the other side and this is the top so the top piece you see has the smaller ugly side and i go back and add extra super glue to this area 10 minutes later carefully flip it over and then you just add your bottom columns now at this point i stop and i let it dry or sit overnight you know, cure time and dry time are two different things. And for maximum hold, you want it to sit 24 hours or overnight. So I just let it alone. Next day, I came back with some sandpaper, not giving super strong pressure and focusing on the corners and the uneven edges. And I also, if I had to put a little bit more pressure, I would hold the blocks down. So be super careful doing this. Now I've done these lanterns before, or a, you know, a version of this, and I did something different this time. I took some wood glue after I sanded, I did not dust away the sanding dust and rubbed it over to give it some extra strength, hold, and to fill in the cracks. But I believe regular Mod Podge or regular glue would work too. Then Rust-Oleum's white chalk paint that I use in pretty much every single video. 
I'm going to paint two coats onto my lantern. I highly recommend or suggest using chalk paint because it is a thicker paint and helps fill in the cracks and you could sand it down to get even a smoother finish. For the second coat, I found it really helpful instead of brushing back and forth to dab the paint to help hide any of the cracks. Then taking burnt umber, I'm going to dry brush my lantern. This is totally optional. And another choice or idea would be to paint with chalk paint. Once again, you can use any paint, but I do recommend chalk paint. Paint with chalk paint, use that as a primer and then spray paint it or paint it any color you want because chalk paint does work as a primer too. And you can see hardly any of the connecting blocks. I have one of the columns, you can see the blocks where they go together more than others, but you have to be like really close to actually see that. Flip the lantern upside down and then glue your bottom piece back in. Now you can take the time to remove all the paper. I did not. Or you could paint the bottom. I also did not do that because you won't see it and I like the contrast anyways. The little circle piece and the square piece, glue those bad boys together and put it back in the bottom of the lantern. I think this would be great to elevate any candle or decor you put in here. So, so far I've spent like $3 on this bad boy. And then using some floral 97 cents from Walmart pieces I've already had on hand. So this is free for me. And Dollar Tree $1 picks, two of them. So $2 right there. Now my inspiration comes from Joann's Fabric or Joann's, whatever they're calling themselves these days. Online, this $40 lantern on sale, it was less than 30. But by the way, it is smaller than my lantern. So I just kind of filled the bottom of the lantern around. I didn't do the big sunflowers, it had pine cones and bigger berries instead. And I love the way this lantern looks. This is over a foot tall, it's wood, and you really cannot see where the Jenga pieces meet or tumbling tower game meet. Now, one of the columns, like I said, you can see more than the others right here, but you have to be about three or four inches away like my face is right now to see it. The rest of it, it's pretty seamless. Like I, you can't really tell where a block began or it ended. And I love the way this turned out. Now, as promised, here are the videos I've mentioned in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next time, my friend.